YouTube, what is good? Welcome to today's video. We are talking about this thing right here. Now this is a lesser known filter and remember like two months ago we made a video on this channel talking about the Promis filter and how it's a filter that most photographers kind of don't know about. They know about it now after that video, but it has a place in most photographers bags. This filter on the other hand, it really it has no reason to be in most photographers bags, but it is super awesome. It's called a Vector Star Filter by Tiffin. And Tiffin is not the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace is. So if you need a website or a domain, squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp, or you can use code Evan Ramp when you purchase to get 10% off. We'll talk about them more later on in the video. Well, when I picked up my Leica SL2, this lens right here is an 82 millimeter lens, which I have not a single filter for. I've never owned one. So I went to pick up a Pro Mist because as we talked about in that last video, I love it and I grabbed this thing on an impulse purchase just because it looks cool. You know, actually I'll make y'all a deal. If we get to 2,500 thumbs up on this video within one day, I will give one of these away on my Instagram. Now, what does this thing do? Essentially it has a bunch of like cross sections carved into the filter, which allows any light to have this star effect on them. Now this is important because typically to get this starburst effect on lights, you have to go out, set your camera on a tripod, do a long exposure and then if lights move in front of the camera you get that light trail and then the big bright lights have the star on them we saw this a lot actually when I was testing the Leica M10 the Voigtlander lens that I had on there it had these crazy starbursts that looked really cool but once again you had to stop the lens up to like f8 or f9 and you had to do a long exposure to get them this allows you to get those stars doing nothing you just throw it on the camera lens bang now you got stars in all your photos now I did take this thing out to test it in the same location where I made photos with the M10 to kind of get some comparisons of this is what the stars look like when you're doing a long exposure, this is what the stars look like with the filter on the lens, and I gotta say, even though it's a little bit of a ridiculous effect, it is cool the way these starbursts fill up the frame. Now, something I noticed that I wasn't really expecting, I thought a filter like this was gonna be, I don't know, really dramatic against say like a Christmas tree or holiday lights. That's one of the reasons I picked it up. I thought, you know, there's gonna be lights everywhere for the next couple months, this could be pretty cool. It does have an effect on those lights, but it's actually more subtle. What I noticed is however strong the light was dictated how dramatic of a, I guess, star effect you got. So things like tail lights, things like street lights that are very small bulbs that have a lot of brightness coming out of them, they had the biggest effect, whereas something kind of more dim, like a Christmas light, didn't have as much of a star effect. I'm sure one of you experts out there will be able to tell me the exact word or phrase there is for that phenomenon. Now, so far, the examples I've had on the screen are definitely impractical examples. Most of the time when you go out to make city and street photos, you are not gonna need something like this. I guess it is cool every now and again to add that star into a little bit more of a boring image. A little more practical of an application is something like portrait photography. So I did some tests in my house, and I definitely think this is a pretty Pretty cool application for this. Once again, it's a very specialized application. You're not gonna wanna do this all the time, but if you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to spice up a portrait or do something a little bit different, and I also tested this thing out with some product photography, basically the same concept there. I just used it as a way to add another element, another layer of interest into the photo. Now here's the thing, this filter costs over $100. I think I paid 118 for it and I was looking online. Sometimes they're more expensive depending on where they are. And I realized most people don't wanna spend that money on a special specialty lens, so I did some research on how to make one for yourself, and I found this piece of info right here. I don't know how well this works. It kind of worked for me, it kind of didn't, but I'm gonna explain how you can make it and you can try it for yourself. But first, I do wanna thank Squarespace one more time for sponsoring today's video and being such a huge part of the channel. If you need a website, if you need a domain, Squarespace is the place to do it. They make web design easy with drag and drop templates. I've built two websites on Squarespace that are integral parts of my photography business. One is my photography website, evanranth.com. The other is my merch website, 1826. Speaking of 1826, we got a few more crew necks on there, size large and size small only, so head over there. You can check out the site, and if you're thinking to yourself, yo, I wanna build a website just like this to sell prints, you are in luck because I have a video on this channel where I show exactly how I built that website. So you can watch that video, I'll link it down in the description below. You can build your own website, and when it is time for you to sign up and purchase that website, you can use code EvanRamp to get 10% off. So head over to squarespace.com slash to start a free trial today, and once again, use 
use code EVANRAMP to get 10% off. So thank you Squarespace once again for sponsoring today's video. Now what the heck is this thing right here? This is a sheet of plastic that I picked up at Lowe's. Now I went online and I looked up DIY star filters. Now you guys know how DIY is. The people in these videos make it seem like this stuff is so easy. I saw one video where someone took a CD case and created the same cross section pattern on it and then all of a sudden it looked like this amazing star filter that was just as good as this one. One, it's incredibly hard to find CD cases in your house. If this was 12 years ago, it'd probably be really easy, but I couldn't find one. So I went to the hardware store, found this. It was $3, which is a good deal compared to $120. Took it home, took a ruler and created a cross section pattern. Now I tested this a few times. The first time I created like a grid pattern, that doesn't work. You don't want to do it. So I went back to the drawing board, drew more lines on there, made the cross sections tighter. That didn't work. So I went back to the drawing board once again, created this whole cross section pattern right there just like that. And it seemed to work a little bit. I'm not gonna say that it's anywhere close to as good as a filter like this is, but I am saying that you can try this for yourself. You can be a little more calculated as well with how you space your lines out, but it is an option out there. If you can find a CD case or you can find a piece of plastic like this, you can create the exact same pattern that is used on the filter and maybe get a similar result. One cool thing about these filters that is not present on something like this is the fact that this filter you can spin to dictate where the star is gonna affect the image kind of like a circular polarizer. Whereas this, you're just gonna be holding it in front of your lens and it's gonna be a little less calculated and you are gonna get some more like chromatic abrasion and some more stuff happening to your photo that you don't wanna happen, which also does happen with the Vector Star filter. It's definitely imperfect, definitely softens up your image a little bit, but it's pretty awesome. And that's why I wanted to talk about it today. Vector Star Filter, the awesome filter that no one needs. I'll link these down in the description below. It's gonna be an affiliate link. So if you go buy one, the channel gets a little bit of a kickback, but don't feel compelled to. I definitely recommend trying this thing out and trying to perfect it. If you make anything cool with the DIY little uh, star filter, tag me in it on social media. Y'all are the truth. Thumbs up, subscribe. See you next time.